Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, we are now going to start looking at uh, you know, functions of two random variables. Right? So, one random variable we saw was quite reasonably okay. Maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Now, what about two random variables? What happens to two random variables? Uh, there are so many functions possible with two random variables. Uh, specifically, we will focus on three functions or two functions, sum, max and min. Okay? So, these are commonly occurring uh, functions that you often use when you deal with uh, random data. So, if you, if you look at them, uh, you will be able to do other functions also. So, I will talk about other functions generally, uh, but you know specific examples I give will be with respect to sum and max and min. Okay? So, let us get started. Uh, the first is small sized examples. Okay? Always do small sized examples. These are discrete random variables. When they take very few values, the table method will continue to work. Okay, the wonderful table method that we saw for the one random variable case will continue to work. It is very simple. Uh, let me illustrate it with the small example where x and y are iid uniform 0, 1 and z is the sum. It is a very standard example. You just write down the table, right? Instead of just uh, one, um, uh, one value x, you now have x and y. And then there is a z which is the sum of x and y, right? 0, 0. And this 1 by 4 is the probability that x equals 0 and y equals 0, isn't it? So, this is iid uniform 0, 1. So, it is 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. So, this table you can make very easily for small sized examples. Okay? So, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then when you do z, you see you have 0, 1, 1, 2. And notice quickly that you have repetition here. Okay? So, you see immediately that this is a many to one function. So, most, ran most functions that take two variables and put you into one variable are going to be uh, many to one, right? So, in fact, maybe you can, so all functions have to be that way. Really? Think about it. Anyway, so uh, it is uh, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, like this. Uh, so, so, you will have these kind of repetitions and you, there is nothing to be scared of in repetition, right? We know how to deal with uh, repetitions. We are simply going to see first that z takes value 0, 1, 2 and simply add up the probabilities, right? So, probability that z equals 0 just comes from this. For z equals 1, it comes from this and this. So, you just added those two 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 gave you 1 by 2 and z equals 2 came to this. Okay, so, it is a very, very simple idea. Uh, if you have a very small set of values that your random variables are taking and you want to deal with functions, do not try anything else, simply make a table. And I would say you can push this table to a, quite a big extent, even if there is like, you know, the two random variables x and y, the table is you know, 10 or 15, you know, you can, you can just write it down. It is not very hard to do this uh, if, if the table is of small size, okay. So, let me show you one more example for max, max of x comma y, okay. And uh, in this case also, the table is uh, quite small. So, x and y have a different distribution here, okay. So, this gives you this part, right. So, this part gives you the a joint PMF of x and y, right? Right? It says uh, probability that x equals x and y x equals 0 and y equals 0 is 1 by 2. Probability that x equals 1 and y equals 2 is 1 by 32. If you want, you can write it in our familiar uh, other form also. So, you can put x and y here. Uh, you have 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, and this is the same as uh, you know half. Uh, this is 1 by 4, this is 1 by 8, this is 1 by 16, 1 by 32, 1 by 32. So, the same thing is captured in this uh, in this tabular way, right. So, it is the same thing, right. So, whether you write it in a ta table in this format or put down one below the other, it is the same data, right. Now, what this allows you to do is to evaluate z for every possible value, right. So, 0, 0 is z equals 0. 0, 1 z equals 1, right? Max of 0, 1 is 1. Max of 0, 2 is 2. Max of 1, 0 is 1. 1, 1 is 1. So, again you identify this. You see repetitions here, but that is okay. Repetition stones caras. You identify z takes value 0, right? So, this alone comes here. What about 1? There are 3 different values uh, that bring you to 1. So, maybe I will come from here. 1. There is 1 more. And there is one more final guy. So, three of them uh, give you one and then there is two. Okay. So, you have to add carefully. So, one, 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 uh, you have to add here. So, how did I get this 11 by 32 in case you are wondering? 
I think I added 1 by 4 plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 32 and that I think is 11 by 32. So 2 and 8, yeah, that's 11 by 32. For this guy, again, uh, I added 1 by 8 plus 1 by 32 and that I think is 5 by 32. Okay. So that's the table method for small sized examples. For small sized example, once again, even if you have a function of several random variables and the table of all possible values of x, y, right, x, y may be taking a lot of values, but you only have to worry about non-zero probabilities of x, y. If x and y take non-zero, with, with non-zero probability, if they take a small set of values, go back to the table method. It really will simplify everything. You can easily compute the distribution without worrying about any of the intricacies of what's going on. Okay, so but notice what's going to happen even with moderate size examples, problems that may show up in your quizzes and various other places, people may ask you if you claim you know statistics or probability, here is a problem, solve it and you'll see the table method becomes very cumbersome very, very quickly. So a pair of fair dice are thrown and then what is the distribution of sum or max or min? Okay. A pair of fair die, you may say just one of six values, but when you have two, it's already one of 36 values, right? So when it goes to 36, the table method is going to be prone to errors, okay. So one maybe can argue you can still do it, 36 is not that large a number, maybe you can write a program to do it, I don't know. But it's it's uh, it's prone to errors if you're doing by hand, uh, maybe you need something slightly smarter, slightly cleverer to do it. Particularly instead of fair die, supposing I have two random variables, each taking values from 1 to 100, okay. So one can be 100 possibilities, another can be another 100 possibilities. 100 into 100 is 10 power 4. You're not going to be able to use the table method very efficiently or effectively, right? So you need to be able to visualize what's going to happen to these functions. Uh, you know, figure out what is the, you know, what is the function doing? How, how it takes you to a particular value and then try to unravel that and do something, okay? So we see when there's two random variables, size becomes large. We need something slightly different and uh, let's start looking at that from the next lecture.